big promises were made in the bid for hosting the Olympic Games in London, with the slogan of Inspire a Generation and a Platform of Sustainability, the London Summer Olympics were meant to help revitalize London's economically depressed East End and leave a legacy of sports facilities for urban youth. The reason why the UK got this bid was because of the deficit of sports facilities for young people in my area and this is their response. I say they're saying, no, the young people can't use it. So what is the Olympics about? It's a sham as far as we are concerned locally. It's a total cop-out and it's not for us at all. They've got it under false pretenses. The Games have cost UK taxpayers in excess of $14.5 billion, up from the original estimate of 4 Many wonder who the Games have really benefited, the local communities or big business. And in other contexts, I can tell you in this area as well, local shops and traders, all of which are suffering from the recession, are all not going to get anything at all out of the Olympics. Along with the permanent structures of those contained within the Olympic Park, there are many other temporary facilities created for the event. One such structure was a basketball training facility in a public park in Hackney, one of the UK's poorest boroughs. Before the Games began, the Real News Network spoke with some local residents campaigning against the building of the basketball facility. There were other locations they could have considered. If you look at the rhetoric from the ODA, they talk about um, legacy for local people. This is not going to be open for anybody to use except for the Olympics. It's a temporary structure, apparently, which means that no, there's no legacy. No one's going to um, benefit from it having been built here. This site where they're, store, they're going to build this hall is actually a, a piece of open grassland in an inner city area where lots of people don't have gardens, they only live in flats, thousands and thousands of people and this area is a place where people can go and, and enjoy themselves and run their dogs and just run themselves and have games of football and all kinds of things. This field is right next to a site of special scientific interest. That's a, a designation in the United Kingdom, which means that it should never be built on. There are very rare or almost extinct species in the next part of the marshes. So by building on this site, they're pushing all the activity, all the local activity, um, into the next field, which is where it is very critical. We have been trodden on and we think that's not right. So we will be continuing to protest about not just this basketball court, but the way that we've been treated by the Olympics, which is to simply be ignored. We're not going to be ignored. We're going to stand up and be heard. And we were people who stood up and said no. We did not want this to happen in our community. We did not want them to take our green space away from us. Unable to sustain the protest on their own, local residents asked members of the London Occupy movement for help. The actual direct actions of stopping the lorries was, was like taking, uh, the decision was taken by a 65 year old lady called uh, Jane, and she's a wonderful woman. And then, then more and more people started doing it. Um, but they couldn't uh, sustain the blockade because of uh, other commitments and work commitments and stuff like that. So they asked um, some members of Occupy to come in and to, um, keep, uh, to keep up the blockade. And so we did, when we did it for 10 days. A few of us got arrested um, and uh, three of us pled guilty to um, a public order offence which was not listening to a senior police officer. Um, and uh, we spent some time inside spent four days inside in jail. Three people went to prison because they couldn't pay the fines of £621 each, which was, which was ridiculous for what is obviously a political matter. It is not a criminal matter. And so we see this as a political action by the authorities um, against people who have a right to protest. We were given um, 24 hours to prepare for two court cases. Um, and we didn't have time to find legal representation. On the second injunction court case, we weren't allowed any representative. I see you every morning when, when I cycle yeah, past. Really I'm just waving you when we're on the bus. Yeah. I just saw you show up with some food for these, these people. So can you tell me why you support them? Um, I support them because I'm really against the destruction of green in sight just behind us. Um, and I'm really glad they're doing it and they're sort of standing up for what they believe in and I, you know, I'm with them. 
Was the Olympics an excuse for a land grab by local authorities and big business? Wealth and Forest themselves um, said in giving, in granting the planning permission for this development, that it wouldn't have been granted in any other circumstance, but because of the Olympics, this was a special case. This has been built on um, old World War II uh, uh, rubble. You see, they've dug it up, they've exceeded their planning permission, and um, they've, they've, they're only meant to be dig 15 centimetres, but they've had to get retrospective planning permission to dig 60 centimetres, which has meant they're digging up loads of contaminated soil. We've, we've seen in writing that their plans always were to go to a deeper depth, um, but the re reason that they uh, went for planning permission where they claimed they wouldn't need to go very deeply is because that meant they didn't have to do an environmental impact study. This whole Olympics business is not necessarily for the people, it's for UK PLC, so it's for, it's for, for the business contingent or the business community. Of, of England. They've ignored the local community and the local community's concerns. I'm from Vancouver originally and I, I know that in Vancouver it was also used as an excuse to clean up areas of uh, degradation again on the, on the back of saying that this is going to benefit local people but in fact the people who really need some uh, legacy are the ones that get chased away, who get turfed out and it's the businesses that make the money. Uh, and the corporations that benefit, and probably the, the Olympic cor Corporation, which moves on to the next country. Um, I'm not an expert on that, but it just seems to me that there's a pattern here. The deadline for the conversion of the basketball building back into a green space is in October. Will this Olympics leave a toxic legacy for the local residents? Are they going to re return it back to the way it was? They're contractually obliged to return it by the 15th of October but they don't have an exit, uh, exit strategy um, actually drawn up and they've not shown it to the community with ring-fenced uh, money to actually put it back how it was. So everyone's very suspicious. Stay tuned, 15th of October, we'll be here. The Real News Network contacted the Lee Valley Authority, but they declined to comment. This is Kathleen Maitland-Carter reporting from London for the Real News Network.